Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's new makeup releases where I'm gonna chat about the new makeup that's been released, announced and sneak peek throughout this week and I'm gonna let you know whether or not I'm interested in it, whether or not I already <laughs> already purchased it and then you let me know down in the comments what you feel about these releases and remember it is okay to disagree, friends don't always agree but friends are always respectful towards each other. And if you haven't been here before, if this is your first video here, hello, my name is Angie. I am such a lover of beauty makeup. I love everything beauty makeup related. So if you want to see some more makeup videos on the timeline, do not forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. I also misplaced my wedding ring and I honestly don't know where I misplaced it. How do I explain this to my husband? I don't know where I misplaced it. And I did film this look actually. I filmed it with the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Palette. I think that this look was live yesterday. It's a yesterday evening video because I got this collection uh, in on late Wednesday night. I got it as PR. It is available now. I will link in a pinned comment what I have on my face right now and I will link the video uh, where I am applying these things and I am super excited to be trying it out. I'm not the biggest fan of neutral makeup, not that I don't love it or that I don't love it on others, I just prefer something that's more colorful on me, but this like burgundy going to a white shimmer, this is very up my alley, so I'm really really enjoying that. I also wanted like PSA, you know how I say that respect my opinion and I will respect yours? Um, it doesn't mean that I have to agree with your opinion. Remember that me not agreeing with your opinion doesn't mean that I am mean or that I cannot take constructive feedback because when you're telling me that I'm ugly or that I'm stupid, that's not really... You need to look up what constructive feedback is. And also, people don't need to agree with your opinion to respect it. I can respect that you have a different opinion than me, but I'm also... I'm allowed to not agree. And also, don't forget that you can be honest and rude. Being honest doesn't, that's not like the get out of jail free card for everything. Oh, I'm just being honest. Yeah, maybe you are, but you're also being rude. Remember, you can be honest and rude. I feel like sometimes people forget like etiquette on how to talk to people. I feel like internet ruined that. How do we speak to people? <laughs> Some of y'all need some lessons, okay? Some of y'all need some lessons. Not all of you. Most of you are very kind, but some of y'all, I'm like, I quarantine in this internet, like, let me, let me scoochie scoochie. It just got you to forget how to talk to people in a proper way. Like, that's not, how, that's not, that's, that's not how we talk to people. Let's, what should we talk about? I feel like there were some really interesting releases this week. Am I the only one, th I might be the only one thinking that. Let me talk about a thing that I'm like, on the fence about. I'm like, do I or do I not need this? And this is the new palette by Adept Cosmetics. This is the House of L and this looks very fun. I love the color scheme of this. The the like orange with the pop of green. Like I really do like it and I really enjoy the Adept palette that I have from before. I don't think I need another eyeshadow palette to review at this point because I just <clears throat> bought one today as well <clears throat> but I, I do like how this looks I love that there is like a it's a different color scheme and that middle color that like very fiery coral that looks like a color that I would really enjoy but maybe I own it and also Adept Cosmetics has a tendency of selling out really quickly uh, which is a it, like a combination of them probably having a really really big fan base of people really wanting to buy the product and maybe not having enough stock also i mean i don't know how much brands are stocking this is just me guessing but this is really pretty and the house of l is of course inspired by uh superman and apparently the owner of adept is a big big superman fan and i i, I like it i also like there's a nine pen it's a little bit yeah i just i like the color story i probably would enjoy the quality but think I might opt out. Here is something that was very easy for me to opt out from and this is the Dose of Colors has done a collection around their best-selling shade. It's called Truffle. I like this but I will say I think it is a little too late. They should have done this in three years ago, four years ago, like when Truffle was big. Like that's when they should have brought this out. And I think it would have sold so much. Like, I I don't think that this is for me. I mean, I never owned Truffle. Did I own Truffle? 
I don't think I own Truffle. I'm normally not the person that goes for a pinky mauve lip, so maybe that could be the reason. I don't dislike how this looks, although I will say that the pink 8-pan palette does look very much similar to one of those empty magnetic palettes that I bought from Glam Shop, the Polish indie brand that has that exact same like color and it looks fairly similar to that one, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, I don't, I don't know. And it's probably not the same, I'm just saying this is just me drawing some like, this is what I see when I see this palette. I can't stop thinking about like that, like single palette that's probably like a wholesale palette from somewhere. But I think it looks nice, but for me, I mean, this isn't a color story that I would really go for. I just... I, think, I, I just wish that they would have done this earlier, back when Truffle was actually, like, peaking. Imagine if they did that. Although, would we have another one of those, like, pillow talk orgasm things on our hand? Do we want that? I don't know if we want that, but yeah. It's pretty, but it's not for me. I'm pretty sure that this is available. I will link it down below. And then there is a palette that's very, very easy for me to say no to. And I don't hate the colors of this one because I honestly think that like these bright greens that you see here, this is, uh, I think it's Playing in Makeup by Yolando. And it's just 35 shades. And you don't get to tell me that we needed all of these 35 shades. This, this could have been a 16 pan palette. Or nine pan palette. A lot of those greens look crazy similar. And I'm sure that if you swatch them side by side, if you if you sit down and you swatch all these shades by side by side, I'm sure that none of them are identical, but I'm sure that a lot of them are similar enough so that you wouldn't need all of them in a palette. But the idea of a grassy green sea blue and a pop of pinky purple that's a really nice idea i just don't know why it needed to be a 35 color palette that's just how i feel it is available it's 50 dollars, which is also like i don't know if this had been 24 dollars and like a nine pan i i think that probably would have sold better but maybe she's not able to produce that i don't know i just feel like it's a little it's a little big this is from base blue cosmetics base blue cosmetics is a brand that they make things that are not entirely what i'm looking for when it comes to makeup and that is that i think that they are basing all of their makeup around concepts or packagings or what they would like the product to look and maybe not as much so how are people going to use this? Are people going to reach for this? Or uh, is this going to be the new holy grail? Because this palette, I mean, it is a work of art. It is a flower eyeshadow and blush palette. It looks very stunning, but it's a big bulky packaging and you open it up and it's this tulips. And I love tulips. Tulips is my favorite flower, but it's like, it's five eyeshadows and five blushes. And it's, I've seen the swatches. Let me show you the swatches. I, I, I'm not that impressed. If you if you just look at this and not at like the, the palette itself, this doesn't make me want to buy it. But the packaging and execution and the whole idea, the concept is stunning. But at the end of the day, it's a makeup product that I am meant to use and want to use and want to reach for. And I don't think that this would be it. Uh, it is available now. It is $42. Again, I will link it down below. I just think that this brand is probably made for people that have a different view on makeup and what it needs to do for them. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that needs to be like inspired just by like looking at products like this. Uh, for me, other things inspire me than like concepts like this. I think that's just a difference in um, opinions. NYX has come up with some new things and I actually did buy one of these. They have re-released their contour sticks, which was about time because their contour sticks, they used to be a darker side and a lighter side. It used to be a like a creamy, almost like a highlighter or like a highlighter stick that was like non-shimmery. And the way that that lighter side sucked. 
like sucked ass like it was so bad it was like it was an actual crayon <laughs> Like, I would have gotten a better result with an actual crayon than that. That, that, ooh, 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 that, that product sucked. So they have re-released that and now it is a darker shade and it is a shimmery shade. I think that's a lot smarter because that's more how we contour and bronze today. Then there are blush sticks with two colors and then they've released their butter gloss in a clear formula. So I'm not interested in the, the blush sticks, but I did buy one of the contour sticks. I want to try it out. I want to see what I think. I have it here. The box is over here. I actually bought some of the REM Beauty when it was released at Ulta. Listen, I... <laughs> I was gonna say I'm stupid. No, I, I am gullible and I was like, I want to see. Is this as bad as people say? Like, is or is it like mediocre or is it actually kind of good? I like, sometimes... Sometimes, hmm, this is something we need to remember with uh, YouTube and I'm not saying this because I think that this is what anyone does, but I have seen this on YouTube with other products. Sometimes people are extremely negative about products. They are just mediocre or okay because negativity sells and negativity gets you the views. So if you think a product is meh, it's easier to say that it's the worst thing you've ever seen in your life because that's going to get you more views. So I want to see for myself. I want to see what kind of products it is. And I think that since there's not a bronzer in that range, maybe I can throw in the, this contour stick in that uh, video as well. And the contour sticks and the blush sticks are $14 and the gloss is $5. These are available at Ulta because that's when I bought mine. So I will link that down below in case you're interested. I really hope that this contour stick is good. I mean, NYX can do really really good formulations so i'm really hoping that they nail this one because i'm like 14 dollars for a cream bronzer highlight to do it if that is a good formulation that's that's pretty dope this is something that i absolutely do not want and this is from glossier and they released a new bomb.com and it's not that i'm against glossier or that i don't think that the bomb.com is good but it's in the new scent of lavender and if it, there is a scent that I absolutely do not like it is lavender as soon as anything says lavender I'm like peace out I hate it I don't want it. a room scent a candle a shampoo I even stopped using a shampoo that like my hairdresser was telling me like you need to use this one because it smelled like lavender and I not get past it i could not get past it that's also the reason why i didn't buy the setting spray from or like the refreshing mist whatever they were calling it from rem beauty because it was lavender and i hate the scent of lavender i only like the scent of lavender if it's actual lavender and we're outside <laughs> <laughs> that is it that is the only reason and yeah I'm, I'm so for me this is an absolute no this is coming soon though but if this sounds like something for you maybe you're super interested but i was like absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not there is a new product coming from Danessa Myris, and this is the Blurring Balm Powder I'm a little surprised that this wasn't launched at the same time as her other because like she released a foundation and she released a primer, right? I think it was a primer and I'm surprised that this wasn't released at the same time. These are, I don't really know what these are. Let's try and deconstruct these because this is the Blurring Balm Powder for face and eyes. Come again. A texture reducing, coverage boosting blurring balm that balances oils throughout the day while maintaining hydration but the eyes i feel like i'm missing i don't understand what this is shade breakdown one is universal so it is flashback free and it blurs primes blurs and sets so it's like a blurring primer balm what is this and then there is Tinted Shades Prime Cover Blur Set. So is it a foundation? Is it a primer foundation all in one? Can be used to prime, highlight, contour, set. Set? Feels like a balm, sets like a powder, natural matte finish, balances oils all day. Oh, it is formulated with Absolite. Okay. Let me give you the tea about Upsolite. Upsolite is a Swedish invention. It is a, I don't know the right uh, English word for this, but it's like an ingredient, let's call it that. It's an ingredient that absorbs 
oil better than any other oil absorbing ingredient you've ever seen in, in like makeup or skincare. This is the ingredient that is in the, oh I have it over here, it is the ingredient that is in the um, mattifying primer by Linda Halberg that just released and it's also the ingredient that is in the Linda Halberg blotting powder. It really blots. So this is definitely a blotting and mattifying product if it has upsolite in it. That is, that is interesting. Works seamlessly uh, with the rest of the Yummy collection, included spatula for hygienic use. So if you have oily skin, this might be a really cool product for you because I feel like a lot of these skin tints or like light coverage moisturizers, they never really jive with really oily skin because they're often like a little bit more oily or dewy or like glowy and an oily skin will just eat through that and you will lose all the coverage. So this is actually a sheer coverage balm for oily skins. Now I understand more. Now I understand more. That is really, really interesting. Upsolite feels very special. If you have the opportunity to see this in store, I don't know if it's coming in store and you can test this, you can see how it really does dry down like a powder. I am a little bit interested now because when it's really warm and really humid, I get oily in this area around my nose. That's pretty much it. And I am now living in Austin, Texas, and I can already tell that the humidity is not only killing my curls, they're not here anymore, they're also gonna give me that glow like around my nose. So I feel like this could be cool to try out for that. I have very normal skin, uh, but I do get a little oily if it's very humid and very warm, but overall I'm pretty normal. Okay, this is a little bit more interesting. Now I understand, but that was like a, that was one of those harder nuts to crack, but this is available April 29th on their website and at different retailers. Okay, I honestly think that that's pretty interesting. Interesting that they're putting Upsolite in more products. Um, I'm excited, I'm excited to see that. Can we also give like a little shout out for this super cute collab? This is a collab with Spongebob and Starface and these are those little pimple patches. Like if you have a sit or something, you can put these on and it will help dry it out. And it's two different like variations. It's one with the Spongebob and it's one with Patrick Star. And honestly, this is so cute this is so cute each pack includes 32 limited edition hydrocolloide colloid is that how you pronounce it pimple protectors conveniently packaged in a cute refillable compact oh so you can keep the compact and refill with other things afterwards that's really nice too hydrocolloid i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly it's clinically proven to help absorb fluid and reduce inflammation to shrink pimples overnight Designed to really stick, they shield spots from outside bacteria while helping them to heal faster, also help preventing scarring. This is cute. <laughs> this is so cute. I honestly really like this collab. I think that that was, that was, that's cute. That's a cute like crossover idea that I can, I can get behind that idea. Let's talk about the thing I bought. <laughs> Let's talk about the thing I bought and that is that there is a new collab between Colourpop Cosmetics and Winnie the Pooh. And if you do remember me talking about Winnie the Pooh, they did a collab with Spectrum brushes. They did some uh, brushes and I was basically saying that I love Winnie the Pooh and I was so close to buying these brushes. But if it, there is something that I absolutely under no circumstances need in my collection, well, need is, well, definitely do not need to add more brushes. Definitely not. So for me, it was like, oh, I really like this franchise. This is really pulling on my heartstrings. I love to be a part of this. I love to be a part of this collab, but I just didn't need any brushes. And then Colourpop was doing collab with Winnie the Pooh. And I honestly think that they did so good. The palette is cute. There are three super shock highlighters, one light, one medium, one darker one. There are some luxe glosses and all the packaging is super stunning. And then we have that... There is a, a duo with the Honey Pot Lip Mask and Scrub Duo that has that little, like the honey spoon or wand. I don't know what you call that in English. I honestly think that they did really good with this collection. And this palette is what I would call an interesting neutral palette because it has some browns, but there's also two pops of yellow, 
two like sagey greens and then there's like a little pink pop. I like it. For being a neutral palette, I like it. I thought it looked good and immediately when I saw this palette, I already like popped two looks popped into my head and I was like, I should buy this and do those two looks. I wanted to buy the palette and the honey pots, but I was on the side a couple of minutes late. So a couple of things have sold out, but when things sell out this quickly, it usually means that ColourPop will restock. So a couple of things are still available. I will link it down below, but I did end up buying the full collection. <laughs> I don't even like the luxe glosses, but I did end up buying the full collection because I love Winnie the Pooh. My mom used to re read Winnie the Pooh to me. Me and my mom still quote Winnie the Pooh in our like adult life. I just, yeah, this is one of those where I'm like, I like this. <laughs> I like this. I like this. I think it's cute. I'm happy that they did with a little bit with the yellow. I've decided that yellow is the best color. Am I alone in this? I love the rainbow, but like yellow, I think yellow is my favorite. I love me a good yellow. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Am I alone? Am I alone? I, I honestly think it's really cute. So I bought all of it this morning. I will link it down below in case you are interested. I had to get myself something to drink. It's a little bit warm in here. Mm. Not like it's hot, but like <clears throat> my throat needed something. Did we talk about these? I feel like we talked about these, right? These are the Huda Beauty Color Block palettes. Did we talk about these? Did we talk about, wait, let me look. Yes, we definitely talked about them. It did feel a little familiar. <laughs> These are available now and I actually did purchase both of them because I am interested always when a mainstream brand does something very colorful like when I, when I say mainstream brand I mean like one of the bigger brands are available at Sephora or Ulta whenever they do something that's really colorful I can't help but being a little intrigued and a little like so is this like good colorful or is this because some brands they just can't seem to do color right. So I'm intrigued to see what I think about these palettes. Um, they are said to be delivered on Saturday. So maybe I'll have time to play with them a little before. Who knows? You never know with Sephora shipping. But yeah, I bought them. I think they're, they're a cute and fun concept. One of the shades in either of these palettes is a cake liner. I don't hate that concept. So yeah, I'm... I'm We'll try them out and we'll see how I feel about it. This is something that I didn't talk about last week, but Stila has come out with some new shades just in time for festival season. I, I can't be the only one that's like, I'm, I'm over Coachella. Like, <laughs> if I never see a post about Coachella, watch me go to Coachella next year. Watch me do that and I'll be like, oh my god, it was so amazing to go. Watch me be that hypocrite. But there are some new Stay All Day Dual Ended Liquid Eye Liners. Uh, there are two shades, two finishes, two tip applicators, ultra thin. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting. That's really fun. Then there are four new Shimmer and Glow, not Glitter and Glow, Shimmer and Glow. So this is the Shimmer Shadows. <sighs> are people still buying those? If you work... Is still are still available at Ulta? Because now I'm like, I feel like maybe they're not available anymore, but maybe they are. If you're working in a store that has Stila, are these like shimmer, glitter, and glows? Are these like liquid shadows from Stila? Are they still selling? Are people still buying them? Because I feel like people moved on or maybe they didn't. Because like I look at these, I'm like, it's just shimmery shadows, shimmery like liquid shadows. I feel like we moved on from that because I feel that at this point, when these shadows came out, they gave you something that you couldn't get in a pressed shadow. But pressed shadows, especially with indie brands, has come a long way since then. A long way since then. And nowadays you can get that result. You can get this result. You can get the, the multi-chrome. You can get the glittering glow result in a pressed eyeshadow. So they no longer fill a purpose. And this is where I'm like, maybe they should try and do the glitter and glow in a pressed version. I think that people would be interested in that. So it's like, I, I don't know. They're not filling a void right now. 
but maybe again I'm seeing this with the glasses on from somebody who's buying indie makeup and maybe if you're not you have a different perspective. I just can't help but think that it's like a little redundant at this point. There is a new palette from Lunatic Cosmetics Labs and this is a mini palette for spring for bright matte shadows. I like quads. I really like quads. I don't 100% know Again, I, I also like, if you're buying from indie brands, I feel like you probably already own a color story like this in other palettes. Because it's like a light blue, a dark blue, a grassy green, and an orange. And it's pretty, it's pretty, but like, would I pay $26 for these four shadows? I, 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 I think I need something more than that and I also like all of their palettes are shaped like coffins this is lunatic cosmetics labs it's their whole thing but I feel like they maybe also need to like take it to the next step if they're gonna keep up because I feel like lunatic cosmetics labs they were so hyped there for a bit with their big contour palette that literally had shades for everyone but it's like those are not the products that people are looking for anymore and I feel like some brands sometimes get so stuck in what has worked before but I also think that Lunatic Cosmetics Labs has a very well worked in fan base that probably will buy all the releases and I have heard that their formula is really good so maybe these are like incredible matte shadows and for that reason it could be nice because who doesn't love a really good quality matte uh, colorful shadow I do I know I do. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. Have you tried a lot of things from Lunatic Cosmetics Labs? My best friend who is not in the beauty community scene, she actually bought the Contra palette from Lunatic Cosmetics Labs. She is fair. Like she is very, very, very fair skinned. Uh, so fair that give four years back there was not a foundation shade for her because no brands made a foundation shade light enough for her she had to mix all her makeup listen this is what she did she bought clown makeup like actual you know the white paint for clowns and she mixed that with foundations to get her shade and i know that she bought the contour palette from lunatic cosmetics labs because that was the only thing that she could find that was like cool and light enough for her so i know that she loves it but like, yeah, have you tried the brand? Like, what do you think about it? Let me know. There's also some new lip oils from Kylie Cosmetics. I'm wearing a lip oil today. Like I said, I'm wearing the new Lunar Beauty collection. This is the peachy one. It's mm, very, very juicy and yummy on the lips. And it smells incredible and Kylie Cosmetics is also coming out with some lip oils. Lip oils have really had a renaissance this past like two years maybe two years I feel like people are really understanding how wonderful a lip oil is and this is a non-sticky formula that hydrates comforts 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 said hope and leaves lips looking smooth and naturally plumped includes three new juicy flavors passion fruit pomegranate and strawberry oh that does sound like really yummy ones. And it seems like they have a little color to two of them. I think it's a set, like you have to buy the set. Hmm, pomegranate? This is me like contemplating like, do I need that? No. <laughs> the answer to that is always no, but still I'm like, huh. <laughs> Okay, here is something that I'm contemplating buying only because I've been on a brow journey and that is that there is a new fluff and hold laminating brow wax from Too Faced. Huh. This uh, laminating liquid wax formula adds volume, texture and total control to give you fluffy, perfectly polished brows with just the right amount, just the right amount of hold. I don't want that. I want it to like be like BDSM hold. I want it to be like, you, you're you gonna need a safe word to get out of this hold. That's the kind of hold I want. I still feel like I wanna try it though. Or do I? I mean, the, the before and after pictures that they're showing looks incredible. 
this says it's available now. Where? On the Too Faced site, maybe? I'll find it and I'll link it down below. But yeah, this is interesting to me. I feel like there's probably, and this is me speculating, I think that in the upcoming year or upcoming two years, we are going to see a brow lamination-esque formula from probably every brand that has brow products. Watch this space. <laughs> I love trying new perfumes, I love buying new perfumes, I'm trying to get myself together though and not buy too many, but there's a couple of new perfumes that I want to talk about. One of them is Mon Paris Lumiere, it's an Eau de Toilette by uh, YSL, and this comes in several different sizes for $65, $85 or $107. This does not sound like something for me because this sounds like a very floral scent and I usually do not tend to go for very floral scents. The top note is Datura, the middle note Note is rose absolute and then the base is white lotus uh, if you like a floral floral perfume maybe this is for you I don't think it's for me because I normally don't go for floral perfumes I also want to talk about the new limited edition collection by Jo Malone I have had to show an extreme amount of restraint to not just buy all of them. One of them is Wood Sage and Sea Salt, which is one of my absolute favorite scents in my collection. If you do not own that scent, if you are looking for an everyday scent that is not too overpowering, but it's not florally or girly or too feminine, it is a unisex scent that is light without being too sweet or too girly, and it's still unique, but not overpowering, wood sage and sea salt is the perfect scent for you. I cannot recommend that scent enough. It is incredible. It is truly a unique and incredible scent. The other scents are forest moss, excuse me, aqua lemon, Crystal Campion, which is the one that I'm the most interested in. I think that that is the last one, or is there one more? Sephora site is being really weird. But the Crystal Campion, I really want to smell that one because it is described as a unisex floral scent. And that has me extremely intrigued. What is a unisex floral scent? It is described as a fresh aquatic, that's how you say it, right? With black currant and campion flower accord. And I do not know what campion flowers are, but I love black currant. So I am, that one is this close to getting to go home with me, but I'm like, should not be buying more perfumes and definitely should not be blind buying perfumes, but yeah. Jo Malone is one of my favorite brands. I know some people don't like Jo Malone because they don't think that they, because they are colognes, they don't think they last enough on them. I think they last just as good as any other, um, like a, a perfume or a, the toilet on me. That is just my personal opinion. The only thing I have that really lasts super long on me is a Dior Parfum. Like it's not an Eau de anything, it's a Parfum. That one lasts basically 48 hours on me. Everything else, basically has the same and Jo Malone really has unique scents that I really like. So yeah, I am I am contemplating that one. I really feel like I would love to try it, but like, I don't know. There is also another scent and this is from Off-White and it seems like Off-White is getting into perfumes. If you didn't know that, most most big fashion houses make the bulk of their money not on clothes, but on perfume and accessories. And I'm guessing Off-White is like, maybe we need to get into the perfume game because I, I, there's probably a lot of like fashion brands out there that make most of their money, if not all of their money through perfumes. I'm thinking Thierry Mugler, maybe? I'm guessing the brand is making probably all of their money through perfumes, if we're gonna be honest. This is not me shaming the fashion, but like, I'm just stab in the dark, stab in the dark. But this is a new beauty line called Off-White Paperwork and they just s released a fragrance that's called Solution Number no. 1. But this one is $185. And I mean, Off-White is not like, it's, I'm, okay, let me rephrase this. I am surprised that a perfume from Off-White is the same price, if not more, than a Dior or Chanel, when the brand itself is not as expensive as Dior or Chanel. Usually, brands tend to 
stay in the same like price range with their beauty as their fashion is. Chanel and Dior, expensive fashion, expensive makeup. Marc Jacobs, not as expensive uh, makeup, not as expensive fashion. So this confuses me a little bit. That could be just me, but... Oh, there's a solution. Oh my god, there's four different... Wait, I'm lying. Solution number one, solution number two, three, and four. So there's a earthy citrus... Uh, floral and gourmand. One of them has lavender. Ugh. It's like $185 is a lot of money for perfume. If I see this in store, I am a million percent sniffing it, but I'm not blind buying a perfume for $185. Um, that's not the tax bracket that I'm in. Tracy Cosmetics is coming out with even more products. They did release some cream blushes a little while ago, and now they're coming up with a breakup rebound collection. And there is a palette that is heart-shaped. This is cute, but not exactly what I'm looking for. And then there is a, so there's a breakup palette and then there's a rebound palette. I think the rebound palette is that little mini palette. Yeah, it has six sh uh, shimmers that are complementary to the breakup palette. I do not need a all shimmer palette. That's not like special shades. That's not things that I'm looking for. Lip glosses. And then there are like lashes and a couple of things. I actually did buy that orange cream blush by Trixie Cosmetics and I did buy an orange lipstick by Trixie Cosmetics. I have not tried them yet. I am trying to film a full face of indie brands at some point. Is Trixie Cosmetics an indie brand? I know that Kimchi Chic is not an indie brand. Kimchi Chic is either owned by an umbrella brand or they are having a big investor. There's a lot of brands that people think are indie brands or not indie brands. Indie means independently owned, meaning that the brand does not have a parent company or that they're not like backed by really big fin financiers. There's a lot of companies that people think are indie brands like Auric, Kimchi Cheek Beauty, um, uh, Beauty Creations that are not indie brands. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know about Trixie Cosmetics to be honest, but yeah, I'm very intrigued to try that orange blush though, but I think I'm gonna opt out of these because they don't seem to be uh, perfect for me. There's also some things coming from Jaclyn Cosmetics, another brand that's not an indie brand, also they're owned by the same umbrella brand that is backing uh, REM Beauty and Morphe Cosmetics. And this is the Lux Legacy Collection, and this is a collab with her mom. Imagine making a collab with your mom. What a dream come true. What an absolute dream come true. Like, I, it really honors her that she did that because I know how much her mom has, like, helped her with her career. So I think that that is absolutely amazing. This is launching on both Ulta and her website on the 24th of April. And this is an eyeshadow palette, eyeshadow primer. Ooh, I do want to try that. Eyeliner pencil, setting spray, loose setting powders, and new shades of liquid lipsticks. Um, that's that's interesting. That is really interesting. Are these finishing powders? Finishing powders without shimmer? Didn't she have? I'm I'm a little bit confused. Are these the? Why are these limited edition powders? I'm a little bit confused. But maybe they're just limited edition packaging. For, I have no idea. I have no idea. I do have the Jaclyn Cosmetics finishing powder that's a little shimmery. And it is a beautiful formula. The lipsticks are pink. We know from before that Jaclyn Hill's mom really loves pink lips. And that I do not. So I'm definitely opting out of that. The eye pencils look beautiful. Is that like a green? I feel like one of the eye pencils look a little... Oh, that's red. It's a little interesting. I will say that I always find it fun when brands or brand owners that are mostly into neutrals try to like, oh, we're releasing something green because Jacqueline was like, I'm I'm changing my logo to green. Guess what's coming? And it's a palette that has two two khaki green sh shadows and the rest browns. And I'm like, that's not a green palette. <laughs> that that's not a green palette. But okay, okay, I hear you. It's cute though. I mean, it's cute for being a neutral palette. Do you want to see me review it? I mean, I could, but honestly, I'm not super excited. I might change my mind. Who? Never say never. Never say never. I will say I'm right now. I'm on a journey on my channel 
where I just review stuff that, that I either think you're gonna find interesting watching or that I just myself am intrigued in reviewing. Because I already have makeup that like fits all my needs. So a release doesn't have to be perfect for me, for me in order to buy it. Because it's like, at this point, I'm just reviewing quality and letting you know if I think things are interesting or not. But of course, there are stuff out there that are more up my alley than others. But yeah, let me know if you are interested in this. I mean, I could be up for it, but it's not like I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my God, this is like my dream palette because I definitely don't feel that. But yeah, you're gonna have to let me know how you feel about it. Definitely not getting any of the lipsticks though because I'm not living that pink lip life. I don't know if there's anything left that I really like want to talk about. Not at this point at least. I feel like I have been talking for forever and ever and I'm not 100% sure if that's true or if that's just me dreaming. Let's maybe talk about this one. This is something I have never seen this brand before and it's called Rising Star MUA and it's a the game changer you've been waiting for. Shop the uh, Emerald City collection now. It's, it's a brand that I've never seen before and it is the Emerald City collection so it's probably based on uh, the Wizard of Oz. The collection looks very well put together, like the embossings of the shadows, the theming, all of it looks... It looks well put together. It looks really well put together. There are a uh, lip mask, hand mirror, galaxy glosses, a b baked highlighter palette, and a pressed pigment palette with eyeshadows. Do I need this? No, but I still... I, I enjoy seeing a brand that I've never seen before in my life and the first time I see them it's something that looks as well put together as this. It makes me a little happy. I'm like, that looks really nice. That highlighter palette is called Over the Rainbow. It all looks very just professional and well put together and you can buy the whole PR box. I don't know. It just looks cool. I like the look of it. Let's quickly go look at Trend Mood. Is there anything new? Nopsy, and then let's just quickly look. Oh, I think that's everything. Okay. <laughs> it is like two o'clock in the afternoon, and I have not had lunch, and my hair is like, look, the, my hair was curly. And then humidity was like, no, you're not, bitch. I need to go look more for my ring because I do not know how to explain that to my husband. Am I gonna have to sneak by a new one? I don't know where I put it. Where did I put it? <laughs> I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. Don't forget to check the description box and the pinned comment for more info if there's anything you're wondering about. And yeah, I'll see you when I see you. If I have a lot of energy, I'll put up a bonus video this weekend. My husband has been working in the lab. Uh, if you're wondering why is there so many videos, Angie, it's because my husband has been working in the lab all of these weekends. So I'm left home alone with a dog. I might as well be filming and playing with makeup. And if I feel like it, maybe I'll put up a bonus video. If not, I'll see you on Monday. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!